Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of Biology 400. This is Mr. Gales, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Chemistry of Life, Organic Chemistry Screencast Session Number 5. This is the Chemistry of Nucleic Acids. Before we begin today, please make sure that you have your materials ready to take uh, two-column notes. You've got your two-column note paper from your organic chemistry packet. In those notes, you're going to be writing down main ideas. Those are the things that are highlighted or underlined on each slide. And then to go along with the main ideas, you want to make sure that you also have uh, descriptions, de detailed definitions, drawings where it's appropriate, and any questions you have, things that you don't understand that you need us to describe in class. Uh, one other thing that you may want to consider is in your organic chemistry packet, there are a few pages that have some diagrams that might be useful for you. Those pages start on, it, it starts on page uh, 85 and runs through page 89 in your organic chemistry packet. All right, so let's begin looking at the chemistry of life, nucleic acids. Our first main idea is nucleic acids. Now, these are organic acids that are found uh, to contain phosphate groups. We know that phosphate groups can can act as acids. This is why that these uh, molecules are named nucleic acids. Also they're named nucleic acids because they're found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Like all organic compounds, nucleic acids contain carbon. We also see here additional atoms, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Uh, the primary function of all nucleic acids is to serve as a genetic molecule. What that means is it stores and transmits genetic information from one generation to the next. I'll give you an example. Your hair color or your eye color or your skin color is a genetic trait. Those traits are determined by genes and the genes are made up of segments of DNA molecules. DNA is an example of nucleic acid. Interesting connection to what we just finished studying with proteins. The sequence of the genes, the sequence of the DNA and the genes determines the sequence of amino acids in a primary uh, protein structure and that primary protein structure then determines the trait that you end up with. All right, so we know that nucleic acids play a very important role in storing and transmitting genetic information. Where are they found? Well, as the name implies, they're found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are complex cells that are present in plants and animals, in fungus, and then in the kingdom that we call the protists. They are cells that contain organelles, one of which we would consider the nucleus, the large, we call it the control center of the cell. Uh, this picture that you're seeing down here shows us a nice example of a, a eukaryotic cell, and we can see the nucleus is a large structure in the center of that cell. Um, another type of cell that we'll study a little later this quarter is a prokaryotic cell. Prokaryotic cells are simpler cells. They, generally speaking, are what we would call the bacteria. They don't have a defined nucleus, but as you can see here in this picture, they have what's called a nucleoid region. This is an area where the DNA is concentrated within the cytoplasm of that cell. All right, so we've looked at the general role of nucleic acids as the genetic molecule, and we know where we would find them in eukaryotic and in prokaryotic cells. So now let's begin looking at the structure of nucleic acids. Our, our next main idea, and the first main idea that ties in with structure, is the main idea of nucleotides. We describe nucleotides as the building blocks of nucleic acids. The nucleotide is what we would call the monomer. Remember, monomers are single units that can be repeated over and over and over again to build large molecules. Every nucleotide contains three basic parts, and those parts include a five-carbon sugar, those are pentose sugars. You should recognize when we see the os ending that it's a sugar, right? So we have the pentose. We have the phosphate group. That's what makes the acid, where the acid comes in. And we also have what's called a nitrogenous base. Now, a nitrogenous base is a, essentially a carbon structure that also contains nitrogen, so simply referred to as a nitrogen-containing or nitrogenous base. When you take a look at the diagram that's over here, this is just a basic schematic of the general structure of a nucleotide. We have the base, we have the sugar, and the phosphate. And I'm going to zoom in just for a moment here on the, the sugar there, and I'm going to introduce you to an idea that we'll come back to a little later. Um, we talked about the fact that in organic chemistry, when you have a carbon-based structure, you can number the carbons on the chain to help you identify different aspects of it. This is the same uh, with the sugars that, that are present in the nucleic acids. This structure, uh, we would number this corner between these two points, these two lines, this point right here is considered carbon number one. This is carbon number two. Over here we have carbon number three. 
carbon number four is here, and then carbon five sticks up in the air off of here, and that's what the phosphate group is attached to. Uh, this structure right here, this, this intersection is actually an oxygen atom. It's not a, a carbon, so you want to make sure that you denote that as an oxygen atom. All right, so when we look at the, the, the molecular model of a nucleotide, we can see here that the base, the nitrogenous base, is going to be attached to carbon number one on the deoxyribose, that's here, and that the phosphate group is attached to carbon number five, which sticks off of the main ring over here. That oxygen atom that we drew in is this red atom indicated on the molecular model. Now, like any monomers, we can take monomers and join them together to form polymers. And the reaction that we use to do that is the same throughout this organic chemistry unit. It's dehydration synthesis. So if you had two uh, nucleotides, nitro nitrogenous bases, the phosphate group, and the, uh, the five carbon sugar, if you have two nucleotides together and you want to join them, you use dehydration synthesis. Dehydration is to remove water. Synthesis means to build. So we're building by removing or extracting water. The bond that results when we do that reaction is a strong covalent bond between the phosphate of one nucleotide and the sugar of the next nucleotide, and that's called a phosphodiester linkage. So here's another key idea, phosphodiester linkages. Now this is the strong covalent bond that would be analogous to the peptide bond in proteins. It would be analogous to the ester linkage in lipids and also to the glycosidic linkage between monosaccharides to form disaccharides. Uh, when we build a polynucleotide like that, we get what is called the sugar phosphate backbone. And I'm going to show a model here. Um, this, you guys have seen this in class. This is a, just a very basic model of a DNA molecule. And when we talk about the sugar phosphate backbone, this is really what we're referring to here. This is the, uh, the part of the DNA nucleotide where the, the nitrogenous base is attached. These colored pieces would represent the nitrogenous bases. They are attached to the deoxyribose, in, in the case of DNA, the deoxyribose or 5-carbon sugar here. and then the, So that's the white square, square is the sugar. The black square represents the, the uh, phosphate group. So you can see that you get an alternating pattern of sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, and so on. And that really is what we, we talk about in terms of the sugar phosphate backbone. This is also where we see the production of that phosphodiester linkage. Phospho for the phosphate, diester refers to the two carbon-based sugar molecules that are present there. Okay. All right, uh, our next main idea is going to focus on those nitrogenous bases. Nitrogenous bases are ring-shaped carbon and nitrogen molecules. There are two general classes of these nitrogenous bases. One group is referred to as the purines. Purines are double rings. They include two bases called adenine and guanine. Uh, one way that you can remember that, it's kind of a neat little mnemonic device, adenine and guanine together, if we take the first letter for each of those, I'm going to get my, my pen feature going here, so if I have an A and the G, I can make the chemical symbol for silver, right, so AG is silver, I can just remember this by saying pure silver, so purines are adenine and guanine. And then a way to remember pyrimidines, pyrimidines, there are a few ways you can remember this. Pyrimidine nucle uh, nitrogenous bases are single rings, uh, and they include the bases thymine, cytosine, and uracil, which we find in RNA. One way that you could remember the pyrimidines is um, pyrimidines have a Y, and thymine and cytosine have Ys. Those are the two that are found in DNA. Uracil replaces thymine when we have an RNA molecule, so that's one way. Another way that you can do it is to form a little word out of this. You can say that we cut, right, cytosine, uracil, thymine, we cut the pi from the pyrimidines, okay? Now, another way that you can remember the, the shape of the molecules, uh, if you consider here, for instance, a purine versus a pyrimidine, the pyrimidines of the two are going to look a little bit more like a pie would that you would cut the pie. Okay, So again, nitrogenous bases are one important component of a nucleotide. We see that there are two major types of nitrogenous bases, purines and pyrimidines. Each one of those has its own specific molecule. We have for the purines, adenine and guanine. 
those are those double ring structures. And in the pyrimidines, we have thymine and cytosine. And when we have an RNA molecule, we replace the thymine with the uracil. Okay, now this picture you guys have in your organic chemistry packet, it's on page 87 in your organic chemistry packet. So it might be useful for you to, to uh, take that out and maybe draw some, uh, some things along with me on this one. Uh, this molecule, or this drawing rather, shows us the DNA molecule. And you can see the picture on the left-hand side of the page has um, the molecule of DNA not wound up like this, but so that it is opened up and we have what is called the ladder of the DNA molecule visible for us. All right. And it shows us essentially what happens when we string a bunch of nucleotides together and then have them pair bond with what is called a complementary uh, nucleotide on the opposite side. So let's go back one more time. What's going to draw? We're going to draw in the numbers here for each of these carbons. This is carbon one. This is two. This would be carbon three here. Carbon four is the one on this corner. And then carbon five is the one that's sticking up by this phosphate group that's a, attached to the phosphate group there. Okay. Now, if we go way down to the bottom, we'll also, you know, number this one. It's one, two, three, four, and five. All right. So you can see that there's directionality to the DNA molecule. Um, the top of the DNA molecule here on this left-hand side is what we call the five prime end. That's five with a little mark like this to indicate prime. That just means that the fifth carbon is sticking up. And then down at the bottom, this is referred to as the three prime end, and that's because the third carbon is uh, exposed there on the bottom chain. All right, uh, we can see here the sugar phosphate backbone. We have sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. The phosphodiester bond is right here. We see the phosphate and the two sugars, so phosphodiester linkage. And here we see the relationship between the nitrogenous bases and how they pair up. Uh, in DNA molecules, we have adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. And adenine always pairs up with thymine, and guanine always pairs up with cytosine. These bases, when they pair up like that, that's called complementary base pairing. And let's start by looking at the guanine and the cytosine base pair and zoom in on that. Uh, when we have guanine and cytosine pairing together, there are three hydrogen bonds that hold them together. So each dashed line here represents a hydrogen bond. So guanine and cytosine, three hydrogen bonds that join them together. If we look here carefully at the adenine and the thymine, slight difference, adenine and thymine have two hydrogen bonds that hold them together. Again, this is referred to as complementary base pairing. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. The next slide basically just summarizes the polymers of the nucleic acids. There are two major polymers. The first one is DNA. That's the one that we're all familiar with. DNA is named uh, because of the name of the molecule. It's an abbreviation of it. It's the, the actual name is deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribose is the name of the sugar uh, that it contains. And we can tell that it's deoxyribose because when we look on carbon number two here, carbon number two has simply a hydrogen atom on it instead of a hydroxyl group. Uh, by contrast, when we look at the ribose sugar that we find in RNA, we can see that oxygen is present on carbon number two, so there's a hydroxyl group there. So deoxyribose sugar, the bases present in DNA are adenine and thymine, which pair together, and guanine and cytosine that pair together. Now, students in the past have told me that they can remember this pretty easily because they just use this little mnemonic device. This is a little bit of gratuitous self-promotion, but uh, my students came up with this one for me. They said this was what it stands for, Awesome Teacher Chris Gales. So there you go. Mr. Workman's class, you're missing out a little bit on this one, I think. Uh, DNA molecule, as you can tell by looking at the the picture of this, this is a double-stranded molecule, and the primary job of, the, of DNA is to store genetic information in the nucleus. RNA, by contrast, uh, is ribonucleic acid, and it's named that because it contains the ribose sugar. Again, ribose sugar has the oxygen on carbon number two. And the bases present in RNA are adenine and uracil. Uracil replaces thymine in an RNA molecule, and then cytosine and guanine stay present. RNA is a single-stranded molecule, and its major job is to actually carry the genetic code out of the nucleus to the ribosomes where the code is converted into a protein. All right, so to summarize, when we look at nucleic acids, 
right? We're going to zoom in on this. Nucleic acids are built of monomers called nucleotides, which are joined into long polymers, polynucleotides, by phosphodiester bonds. And the, the polymer that we see is either the DNA strand or the RNA strand. And its major biological function is that it helps to build chromosomes. Those chromosomes contain the genetic information which determine your traits. All right, so that's it for nucleic acids. If you have any questions, please make sure you address those in class, and we'll see you in biology.